Hello brothers and sisters. In this exercise you will learn to create an animated flipping effect in 3D space using CSS which allows more content to be displayed on the backside of any elements when the user interacts with them. It's a really creative way to deliver more content to your users. You can make flip animations for card games, show recipes on the back of food photos. You can even use it for your portfolio pieces where the project thumbnail is on the front and the project information with some links is on the back of the thumbnail when it flips over. The ways you could use it are only limited by your imagination. First let's take a look at the finished effect that way you can know what you're getting yourself into. I have three boxes here and when I put my mouse over them they flip and keep in mind that the animation would look a whole lot smoother on your machine because the frame rate of my recorded video is going to make the animation appear a little bit choppy but trust me it's smooth as butter and you can put content on the front and the back of these elements which is really cool but really there's two elements stacked in there back to back and by default the one on the back is flipped 180 degrees but then when the animation occurs it is made to rotate back to zero degrees and the one that is originally on the front rotates to 180 degrees okay let's get cracking crackers we're going to begin with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. Mine is named Flip3D CSS3 Tutorial.html. You can name yours whatever you want. Now within the body element, we're going to start with our HTML just to get that out of the way because it's very simple. We're going to start with a div, go down a couple of lines and close that div. And we're going to give that div an ID equal to Flip3D. And inside of that div, we're going to make a child div and close that. And let's give that child div an ID that's equal to back. And let's just put in the inner HTML, box1, back. And this is where you can put all of the HTML, or all the content that you want on the back side of the element. Now let's just copy that child div and make another child div called front. And we'll say box1, front in the inner HTML. And basically that's the structure of the HTML very simple actually I'm gonna change these to class instead of ID that way we can target multiple boxes or multiple cards all at once with one set of style rules so change for the ID to class I can take that div control C and just put two more or as many as I want and then in the inner HTML just say box 2 box 2 box 3 box 3 so you have box 2 back, box 2 front, box 3 back, and box 3 front. Now what we're going to do in the CSS is basically in 3D space we're going to rotate the back and front of these flip 3D elements to where one starts at 0 degrees rotation and the other starts at 180 degrees rotation. And then we're going to simply flip them. The one that was at 0 is going to go to 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees and the one that started at 180 degrees is going to flip to zero degrees. So that's the logic of what we want to produce. Now up in our CSS the first thing we're going to do is target this class of Flip3D. So you just type in dot Flip3D and open and close your curly braces. Now, each one we want to have a width. So I'll set mine to 240 pixels. And you can style these any way you want. Height, let's say 200 pixels. Margin, I'm only giving them margin space so they have some space in between each card or each flip 3d box 10 pixels in between each I'm gonna make sure each flip 3d block or box floats left that way we can stack them horizontally on the page if you don't float them left they're gonna stack vertically down the page And that's all the styling that we're gonna do for these container the flip 3d container boxes now we want to target this flip 3d container box class again and affect all child divs with a class of front so we're targeting all divs with the class of front open a curly brace and put the closing curly brace now the first thing I want to affect is the position I'm gonna make it absolute Then I'm gonna use the CSS3 transform property we're going to affect the perspective so we'll run the perspective function and we want to affect the rotate Y so we're going to run the rotate y function as well for the transform property. Now the perspective we want to set somewhere around 600 pixels. You can make it a thousand pixels as long as it has a high enough 
pixel amount to where it's not really warped. If you put this down to maybe 100 pixels, you'll see that it's a really warped perspective. So I put it at 600 to give it a nice perspective. Now for the rotate Y value, we're just going to put 0 degrees because the front of the card or the front of the element is facing forward by default. And the reason why I put absolute position is just so I can easily stack those divs in there. So I just put the back in first and then I put the front right over it. So the front will stack on top. Now this next set of properties is just to affect its basic cosmetics. So the front of the card is going to have this background. The width is going to be 240 and the height is going to be 200. The same dimensions as our Flip 3D container box. And I just gave it a border radius of 7 pixels just for a cool cosmetic effect to round off the edges. Now we want to run the back face visibility property and make its value hidden. That way you can't see the backside of elements as they're turning around. You'll only see the appropriate size as it's spinning. Now to animate the transform property, we're going to use the transition property. So we run the transition property to affect the transform property in CSS. And over 0.5 seconds, so over half a second, it's going to animate in a linear fashion. That's how long the animation takes to occur, 0.5 seconds. So if you want it to be faster, you make this a smaller number. If you want it to be slower, you make this a larger number. Now since this is CSS3, I'm going to be testing in Firefox because Firefox respects the standardized syntax of the transform property in CSS3. In other browsers you might have to use prefixes but I'll discuss that at the end of the video and we'll put in prefixes for WebKit and Opera, whatever else we need to put it in for. But for now I would recommend you test in Firefox. If you want to test in Google Chrome then just wait more towards the end of the video and I'll put all the prefixes in and you can test in Chrome. Now all we're going to do is copy this whole set of rules here for the front and we're going to paste and we're going to change front to back that way we're affecting the divs with the back class. And we're going to leave all these properties pretty much the same. But we're just going to change the rotation from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. So rotate Y for the backs are set to 180 degrees. That way by default before the user interacts with the element it's already flipped on the y-axis in the opposite direction. That way when the animation occurs, it just writes itself to zero degrees. And then the front card inverts itself to minus 180 degrees. So what you can do is just take this rule here, or the starting of this rule, and go down one line, pop that in, make sure you put in your closing curly brace. And what we're going to do now is target the flip 3D hover pseudo selector and what that does is anytime anybody's mouse goes over or anytime the user hovers over any of these containers with the class of flip 3d the hover state the hover pseudo selector will initiate new rule and all we have to do inside of that is change the transform so we leave the perspective how it is at 600 and we change the rotate y for the front element to minus 180 degrees then we can just take that copy it and make the same thing for the back. Now the back when the flip 3D container is hovered the back card of the back of the card is going to flip to zero degrees. Now oh, I just noticed I have semicolons in the value area for the perspective. You don't want that. It won't run correctly that way. And we also need to change the background color on the back. So I'm gonna go to color and change it to a nice light blue. Okay save and then file, preview and browser, Firefox. And you see? Now you have nice back to front flipping animations. You can put any content that you want in the back and front of these boxes. You can put as many of these boxes as you want on the page together. And these CSS rules will affect all of them. Now if I go to file, preview and browser, Google Chrome, I get no animation, no effect. It's because I need the WebKit prefix for the transform property. So let's see if we put in the WebKit prefix for the transform property if we get a working application in Google Chrome and Safari. So all we have to do is copy these transform lines, the standard syntax, and right above it we'll put the 
WebKit prefix version. And we'll do the same thing down here in the hover state. And we also have to add the prefix for the WebKit transition transform property. So I guess what we can do is copy that and right above it we'll just put a WebKit version right here. And we'll do the same thing to this one, see if that works. Take a WebKit prefix and put it right on the front of this transform property. And I think Google Chrome is okay with the back face visibility and transition and all that. We just have to prefix the transform property anywhere that it is. So now let's go to File, Preview in Browser, Google Chrome. And you can see that we have our animation. But we're not getting any... We might also have to prefix the back face visibility. So let me try that. Let me put WebKit on the back face visibility. Let's grab that and also put it down here. File, Preview in Browser, Google Chrome. There we go. So now we have a working application in Chrome as well as Firefox. So we file preview in Firefox. Yep, now it's working in all the WebKit browsers, Firefox, and let's try it in Internet Explorer. Yep, it's working in Internet Explorer 10 as well. For older Internet Explorer versions, you might have to use the MS prefix. And for Opera, you have to add the O prefix. So instead of WebKit, you also add to this application the O prefix to target Opera browsers and that will help you target all browsers if you use the WebKit, MS, and O prefixes. MS is for Internet Explorer, older versions. O is for Opera. And I just demonstrated how WebKit is for Google Chrome and Safari browser. Now in Firefox you don't have to worry about because it uses, it relies on the standardized syntax which is cool. Alright, now I have a homework assignment for you guys that will test your logic and your creative skills when it comes to JavaScript programming. Because you have to target more than just the hover effect, the hover pseudo selector. Because as you noticed, our boxes flip when we interact with them in the hover state, the hover pseudo selector. But there's many times where you would want the user to actually click on something to make that animation occur. And really, when you're playing card games and things like that, the user would click a card to make it flip. And furthermore, when people are on mobile devices, there really is no hover state. So then you're screwed there. If somebody's on a, a smartphone or a tablet, they can't hover. They can only tap. So you want to make the click event, the uh, or on mouse down event, the mechanism that triggers the animation to occur. And not the CSS pseudo selector of hover that we're using here. You see, we're using the pseudo selector of hover to make the animations occur. So, this is your homework assignment. I want you to go to developphp.com and type into the search bar trigger CSS transition JavaScript. Type in trigger CSS transition JavaScript and search. Now you're going to see a video tutorial at the top of the list. It's called Trigger CSS3 Transitions with JavaScript to Control Animations. So I want you to take the logic in this video tutorial and trigger your new cool flip animation, your flip 3D animation using JavaScript functions, which I clearly show through this whole tutorial here. Now remember in your JavaScript you also have to put the... let me just go to a new page. Alright, so say like in your CSS, you target the WebKit browsers with the prefix WebKit in this manner. You're putting hyphens around the word WebKit. So that's how you target it in JavaScript. You can target the WebKit prefix for the transform property in this manner in your JavaScript. And that might be a little hurdle that some of you guys run into during your homework assignment. So following this tutorial, we'll show you how to use JavaScript as the mechanism that triggers the animation to run. So you can target way more than just the hover pseudo selector. You can target the click event. You can target maybe when an Ajax operation or an Ajax request finishes. You can make an animation run like spinning something in midair and saying boom operation finished or whatever. You know whatever you want to do.
My point is, for the best use of these kind of animations, you would definitely want to learn how to trigger these kind of animations in your JavaScript. Because while you're programming card games and things like that, you're going to have to tell those things to flip on more than just a hover state, more than just when the user's mouse hovers over it. You're going to need more user interaction events and that's gained through JavaScript. All right, so good luck in your homework assignment. So I want you to make these boxes flip on the click event when they're clicked. Or you can put a link in the front side of the box that will click to the back side. For instance, you can have a link right in here in the orange side of the box that says click to flip. And when that's clicked, you run a function that will make the transition occur using JavaScript. Because right now, it's just running on the hover pseudo selector. And you have to make it more handy than that. And I was considering just writing it for you guys, but that would take all of the challenge and skill building away from you. It's really going to test you and build your skills for you to do it by yourself. And it is definitely possible because I already did it earlier this morning.